Hello and welcome to this video on paper 2 question 5 for the AQA GCSE. We're going to be looking at the technique that will help you answer this question known as fires. So first of all, what does question 5 on paper 2 involve? Well, like paper 1, question 5 on paper 2 is also worth half of the marks of the paper. The marks are awarded similarly to paper one by your content, your clarity, your purposeful use of language for effect, your spelling, your punctuation and your sentence variation. So let's have a look at some examples of question five in paper two. Now normally you will be asked to write one of three different types of documents. However, the structure of the questions remain the same. You could be asked to write either a speech, an article, or a letter. As I've said, the structure of the questions remain the same. A statement is given, and it will be up to you to argue for or against that statement. So to help you achieve the past criteria in the exam, I'm giving you a technique that may be useful. This is what I call fires and is a checklist of some vital things you could include in your writing to make it much more engaging. Fires stands for facts, incident, rhetorical question, expert and statistics. Let's go through each of these so we understand fully what they are and how we can use them. So when we're talking about facts, we're talking about things that are true in relation to the topic that the question is focused on. They need to be facts related to the topic. They do not need to be 100% true, but 100% believable. A bad example of a fact to include would be things like aliens are secretly working in the government. This is something that is not going to appear truthful to many people. However, a good example of a believable made up fact would be the government invests millions of pounds into computer virus protection. Whilst we don't know if this is 100% true, it does seem like a believable fact. Ideally, you want to create three to five individual and separate facts that relate to the topic you are going to write about. If you are struggling to create these facts, please remember that you can make full use of the sources from the reading section of the exam. Always, these documents will be related to the question that you have to create a document for and will be very useful. An incident is a moment where you are able to create an emotional connection to your reader. Often these are witness reports or interviews. They can be about a similar incident or event that has occurred that relates to the topic you are having to write about. The incident paragraph gives you a chance to become much more emotional, making use of witnesses' quotes and have much more strength and emotional weight behind their words. The aim of the incident paragraph is to make the reader feel sorry, more motivated or encouraged by those who have experienced a similar event. Examples that you could use are if the topic is on things like gun crime, you may want to have a mother give her personal story about how her child was shot. The more detail you can give, the better. If the topic is drug legislation, you could talk about how someone's father's pain was reduced when they were allowed to smoke marijuana. Or whether festivals should be banned, you could talk about how someone met their future wife. As I've said, the more emotion and detail and descriptive powerful words you can put into your incident paragraph, the much more greater an effect you will have on your reader. Now that we have tugged at the reader's heartstrings, it is time to engage their brain. Now most people, when met with information, can go one of two ways. They can either believe it or not. This is where experts and statistics come in. When we are met with an expert, we tend to trust that their knowledge and skill is greater than ours, and so are far more believable. In terms of your writing, 
This means that you can employ the use of a doctor. Now the benefit of a title of doctor is that someone is a specialist in any possible area or field of academics, from medicine, economics, engineering or history. And you do not necessarily have to state what that speciality is. For example, Dr. William Smith of Oxford University could be an expert of medicine, economics, engineering or history. It does not matter. By simply stating the doctor's title and the university he is from, the reader automatically recognises the doctor's authority and trusts that their knowledge is greater than their own. The other benefit of using experts is that doctors perform studies into the areas that they are specialists in. And studies are a great way of including statistics to further support why your belief and your opinion in your question five answer is the correct one. So an example might be, the doctor's study found that 78% of accidents were caused in the home. Your statistic can change going higher or lower, but like facts, you want to keep it believable. So using numbers like 100% or 1% would be recommended not to be used, as this makes it less believable. Using numbers in the 70s or 30s would be much more believable. A smaller but equally powerful tool is the rhetorical question. Now most people, when given the chance to define what a rhetorical question is, can give the first half of an answer. A rhetorical question is when the answer is obvious or not meant to be given. The second part of the definition is that it's designed to get the reader to think about a topic and to also convey the writer's clear opinion without directly stating it. So for example, a non-rhetorical answer that you would include in a question five would be, to buy a new house costs a lot of money, and I think that it is better to rent. This would be cheaper than a mortgage each month, and I think it would save you a lot of money. Whilst there is nothing wrong with this, it does not in any way engage the reader in the writing. However, through using a rhetorical question, to buy a new house costs a lot of money, and I think that it is better to rent. This would be cheaper than a mortgage each month. Wouldn't you want to save money? Simply by adding this question, the reader automatically knows my opinion as a writer and is also reflecting on the knowledge that they have gained so far and hopefully agreeing with your opinion. So now that we understand fires, here is how I propose that you use them. I recommend that when answering question five, you create between five to six paragraphs. Your first paragraph should be an introduction in which you use the question to state what the topic is about and also state your opinion. Your second paragraph should make use of your facts, setting them out in a clear methodical manner. Paragraph three is your incident paragraph where you bring in witness testimony of a similar event and tug at the reader's heartstrings through the use of emotional language. Paragraph four is where you can bring your expert in and thus give more added weight to your opinion. Paragraph five or six would be your conclusion. This is where you repeat your stated opinion in your introduction and quickly sum up the previous paragraphs, which should all reinforce why your opinion is correct. So now that we have our paragraph guidelines, let's try and use them in a shortened version of a question five answer. So first, let's take a look at the question. Snow seems like a picturesque, exciting and fun, but in reality, it causes accidents, inconvenience and economic disruption. Write an article for a broadsheet newspaper in which you explain your point of view on the issue. So first of all, I want to pay attention to the fact that it says write an article. This means that I have to set out my answer like a newspaper article and not a letter or a speech. The second thing I have to do is decide where in this point of view my opinion sits. 
Do I believe that snow is indeed fun and harmless? Or do I believe that it causes accidents and inconvenience? For the purposes of this answer, this example, I'm going to say that it does cause an inconvenience and economic disruption. Now, as I've said, this is going to be a much more shortened answer. If you were to do this in the exam, you would need to flesh this out with further details and examples. But for the purposes of this example, let's take a look. So paragraph one should be your introduction, in which I use the question itself to state my opinion. To many people, a snow may seem the most exciting and fun things that can happen. However, to some, snow can be one of the most disruptive and dangerous forms of weather. For some, it can result in accidents, disruptions, and even cost people many thousands of pounds. All I've done here is made use of words that are already in the question, and the tone sets out quite clearly my opinion of snow. That's the first paragraph done. Paragraph two is where I make use of all my facts. Now I need to make sure that they go in a cohesive manner, but they are there to set the scene as it were. Each year cities across the UK are brought to a standstill when snow begins to fall. Heavy snowfall has resulted in transport such as trains being cancelled, businesses forced to close, and schools unable to ensure students safety shut. As a result, some parents are unable to plan or organise for childcare, and so would have to not go into work. To some people, a day's wages can make the difference between paying bills and becoming homeless. All of the sentences in this paragraph are facts. And so paragraph two is now complete. Paragraph three is where we bring in a witness who has been able to give some emotional backing to what we are saying. Sarah, mother of two, stated she once had to call in sick for a whole week due to heavy snowfall. Her children were unable to attend school and so she had to stay at home to look after them. This cost Sarah all of her remaining holiday hours from work. I was not able to go on holiday to Spain with the rest of my family later that year all because of snow. Weather can seem fun for some, but for others, it can cost them greatly. As you can see, I've tried to use quotes from Sarah to reinforce and make more believable the emotional story and baggage that comes with a bad snow day. And thus, paragraph three is completed. Paragraph four is where we bring our expert in. According to the research done by Dr. Harold Smith at the University of Cambridge, snow days can cause 38% drop in business revenue each day that the heavy weather persists. The doctor's study concluded that heavy snow especially can have a lasting effect as once the snow melts, the added water can then create flooding issues. This can cause further disruption to transport, family lives and businesses. Here again, I've used quotes from the good doctor and his study through statistics to help reinforce my opinion. This means paragraph four is now complete. That leaves us with our conclusion. Is snow nothing but harmless fun? Studies in the personal lives of families, businesses and commuters to work would all agree that in reality has a devastating effect on all aspects of the smooth day-to-day -day running of our lives. Snow may seem harmless, exciting and fun to children, but for working adults it can be very much a disaster. So again, similar to my introduction, I have made use of some of the keywords from the question or synonyms related to them. I've also started my paragraph of conclusion with my rhetorical question. By this point, my opinion should be very clear to the reader. So a rhetorical question in my conclusion is a good place to put it. As I've said, this is a short and simple example of an answer and will require a fleshing out with more facts, more descriptive detail and an overall more use of language. Hopefully this has given you a clear example of how to implement fires into your own piece of writing. 
I hope you have found that this video has been useful and you may want to go back to previous questions earlier in the video and have a go at them yourself, seeing if you can implement fires in the similar format as I've shown you. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy it and hope you will watch future videos.